a bad joke. You've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. What is going on YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers. A lot to talk about in this video today. The incoming big event of the week that's going to drive the market at least until the next major event, which is probably, I guess, maybe the CPI print. I think that's like September 13th or something, but it's PAL this Friday. I think it's 2 o'clock two Eastern time. So 2 p.m. Eastern time, PAL's going to give a speech. As you guys know, we went over this last video as well, which over 17,000 of you watched. So thanks for that. Please do like and subscribe to my channel. But Powell's going to give a speech, and last time he gave this speech, it propelled the S&P down a big time, okay? This was over here in this event. This was how we went to our October bottom on our pivot point. Had the pivot nailed the exact top August 16th, so you're looking at a basically a year anniversary here for Powell's speech, and then the propulsion downwards because of what Powell said, how hawkish he came off. Now, I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter what pattern you have in the market marketplace. doesn't matter if you have a bullish pattern, a bearish pattern. What Powell says will override it. You could have the most bullish rebound pattern in the world. If Powell comes out hawkish and says higher for longer, we're not done raising rates. The markets will sell off. The DXY will rise. The 10-year yield will rise. Uh, and most of those yield experts on YouTube are all going to be wrong. They don't understand the market cycle. But you guys are going to get all this sigma, not alpha. You're getting the sigma on this channel. This is based. I want to show you guys one big thing. Let's talk about a news event to highlight what our previous uh, intro was talking about. The government doesn't care about you. You live in a prison. So for those of you that don't know, we have a lot of viewers outside of the USA, about half of our viewers. Uh, Hawaii had the largest natural disaster in its history. Okay, we had over, I think it's 117 people are dead now. Over 850 to 1,000 are still missing. Billions in damage. And initially when uh, President Biden right? The clown show of the administration that we have right now. President Biden was asked about this while he was on his beach vacation. He just smirked and said no comment. And then it came out, the Biden administration wants to send $700. <laughs> So this is so effing stupid. Seven hundred dollars to each family. Seven hundred dollars per family affected by the. You lost your house. You lost your business. Your neighbor died. Your husband died. Your wife died. Here's seven hundred dollars. But what's what sparked all the outrage was they did this on the back of asking for more money for Ukraine, sending another $200 million to Ukraine, bringing our total to $113 billion that we've sent to Ukraine. Because in this country, we don't care about the citizens that live in this country. We care about the deep state. We care about centralized authority. We care about dividing everybody, making everybody hate each other so that they don't notice bullshit like this. We just got out of a 20 20-year war in the Middle East, a 20-year war, and within a year of Biden being elected, we are now funding another proxy war, pushing us closer to World War III. Meanwhile, our major cities are collapsing. Meanwhile, in congressional testimony earlier this year, it was let out that up to 300 Americans are dying every single day, every single day, 9,000 people a month from what? Fentanyl specifically smother, smuggled over the southern border. My daughter lost two friends in high school to fentanyl. Somebody poured it in somebody's drink and they died. We are losing 300 people a day to fentanyl. So we care more about foreign countries' borders than we do our own border. This is the clown show idiots that we have running this country. We haven't had a great president since Reagan. And what happened to him? He was almost assassinated and then went on to win 49 states. Landfall, waterfall of an election. And then before him, the, next, the last great president was JFK. What happened to him? He was also 
shot, but he was assassinated. Again, you have to understand in this country, this is an oligarchy of corporations and big media. And this is why at the end of the day, with the exception of a few great politicians in this country, these guys all go hang out together. They all hang, they're all friends. They all hang out together. Look at former President Bush hanging out with Obama, hanging out with the Clintons. It doesn't matter, guys. The one pariah they hate is Orange Man Bad. Orange Man Bad went in there. And what did the deep state do to him? Well, he was a Russian spy. Remember that? He was a Russian spy. He's He was impeached a couple of times. He's been, now been indicted, I think, four times. They're trying to get him off the ballot. There's other options I like, too, like Swami. You guys should check out Vivek uh, Ramaswamy. He looks awesome as well. We have some great options. Allegedly, our votes are going to be counted next year. So if we have these options available to us, I highly suggest we throw out the clown show that is leading us into a possible World War III, doesn't give a shit about you as an American citizen, and you know the economy is most likely going to crash under his watch. So this should be an easy walk-in for the next candidate to sweep this election. But you can never, never underestimate the stupidity of people involved in, the, in the elections in this country. More people care about what emoji you have on your Instagram and more people care about those things than care about things like, you know, World War III, economic collapse, but whatever, I digress. Let's go ahead and move forward. I may have to do a, a full podcast on this at some point. If you guys want to see it, let me know. Just talking about, because we got a lot of things happening, so I can segregate it from the TA, but I got to rant about some of this stuff. I Look, I just want to show you one clip, all right? I, I can't resist. I want to show you one clip. So in my country, if you look at the Demo Democrat-controlled cities, the Democrat-controlled states, they're all third world country shitholes at this point. You look at Chicago, you look at Baltimore, you look at San Francisco, which has the highest concentration of wealth and a single area, I think anywhere in the world with Google there, the big tech headquarters there. Let's just show a clip from San Francisco. This is what happens when you care more about social justice than say safety, decency, culture. Lee, show that clip real quick, quick of San Francisco. I challenge any one of the news organizations in San Francisco to go down to Civic Center at nighttime with their camera crew. I haven't seen any of them go down there with the camera and film at Civic Center at nighttime. The addicts and the homeless people, they have taken over this sector of the city. It's gotten to the point to where it looks so crazy. It looks apocalyptic almost, like something you see out of a movie. Where I filmed the, the video of the children getting off the bus stop, that's on 8th and Mission. I mean, it's Mission and Market. Those are the two main corridors for San San Francisco. And when you have one of the major intersections like that being hijacked by drug users and drug dealers, you really have a problem on your hands. When I ask them, hey, what are you doing shooting up right here? And they look at me like I'm crazy because that's how emboldened these policies have made the addicts. They've actually feel like they have the right to just be out there living like that and exposing children to this and all the other citizens of San Francisco to this. Really, it's kind of disgusting if you think about it because that's how bad it is down there. That is what the country looks like. This is what happens when we send billions and billions of foreign aid, but we don't give a shit about fixing our own country, fixing our degrading education system, which is falling apart. Kids are so stupid these days. Guys, I have to quick, quick story. So when my daughter was in high school, I picked up her and some of her friends, a couple girls, a couple guys from the movie theater, right? And uh, it was one of the guy's birthdays. So my daughter handed him a card that she had saved in the car, handed him a card. And he's like, oh, he's like, oh, thanks so much. This was a really nice guy. Okay. He's like, oh, thanks so much. And he's like, what does it say? And she's like, what does it mean? What do you mean? He's like, what are the, what are, what is it? I can't read it when the writing's squiggly. That's what he said. I can't read it when the writing is squiggly. This is senior year in high school. These kids are 17, 18. He couldn't read cursive. Couldn't read cursive. That's where the education system is. This is what happens. And you guys over in the UK, I mean, look at your NHS. You know what happens when you let the government control your healthcare, control your life. My generation, I'm the end of Gen X. I guess you could say I'm the end of Gen X. And then just beneath me, it was the beginning of the millennials. You're not going to have social security. And if you do, it's going to be a shadow, a shell of what it is now. You got to find financial security. That was part of my motivation to really buckle down, really get in the trading, really 
really focus, really study, really try to knock this out of the park. And I was fortunate. I was blessed last year with my TA lining up with exactly what I thought the market cycle was doing. And guys, that's continuing. This is just the beginning of it. This is why it's exciting time to be a trader. But I highly suggest, not financial advice, everybody finds their path and get financially secure, get out of debt, because I think the world is going to dramatically change. If you haven't watched Ray Dalio's video, Changing World Order, he released it a year ago. It has like 40 million views. Oh, who's Ray Dalio? He started Bridgewater from nothing. Started Bridgewater, world's largest hedge fund, top 25 wealthiest people in the world. He spent a lot of time studying market cycles, studying economic cycles, studying civilization cycles, which is what that book is about. But he also made an hour long, maybe hour and a half long video. You guys should check it out because he has us in the end stages as well. You can compare that to the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, but there's a lot of things that are going to change in this country. You have the Eurozone on the cusp of a recession and an economic collapse. You have China collapsing economically in front of your eyes. And then you have the U.S. The U.S. on its fast track to go towards an economic collapse. Okay. Be aware of this because as you can see with Hawaii, nobody is going to help you. And if they do, they're incompetent and inept and it won't be enough. You need to be able to take care of yourself. All right, guys, let's move on to the TA. Do like and subscribe. If you want to be in a room with 12,000 like-minded individuals, guys, check out our Discord if you check out SimpleFX or BingX, two fantastic exchanges. SimpleFX, you can get up to $5,000 instantly based on your deposit to trade with and your margin. It is instantly available. They will pay for your first month in our Discord. All that information is in the video description. So look at the video description. If you have any questions, you can't figure out how to join, you don't understand how to download, download something. Joining Discord can be difficult for some people, especially old heads like me. Message Lee in the Telegram. That link is right there in the video description. Click it. He will respond ASAP because that's what I pay him to do. <laughs> All right. So guys, let's go ahead and talk about what's happening in the markets. The key event happening in the markets is this week with Powell. Again, this is going to be the big event in the markets. If Powell's hawkish, VIX is going to shoot up, DXY is going to shoot up, and the yields are going to shoot up, putting pressure on cryptos, pre pressure on equities. If PAL is dovish and nobody knows, then you're going to see the reverse of that. The markets move back towards their highs. The VIX come down. The DXY lose some strength. Nobody knows what PAL is going to say. To prove that to you, Lee, where's our Bloomberg montage of the geniuses on Wall Street? Go ahead and play that for the people. Live from New York coming up, stocks poised for the longest losing streak of the year, with investors bracing for high rates for longer and economists slashing China growth expectations. We begin with the big issue, the countdown to Jackson Hole. Jackson Hole. Jackson Hole next week. Next week, uh, Jackson Hole. At Jackson Hole, there's really going to be two, two points of focus. It will really come down to Powell to be uh, on message. Don't really think that we're going to have, we're going to hear uh, a big change in narrative. You're getting a Fed that was hawkish and raised rates very substantially. What is the Fed ultimately looking for? They're likely to take a look at supply demand imbalances in labor markets to decide how much more, if at all, they need to adjust the overnight Fed funds rate higher. Lean on to, into a hawkish bias still. A FOMC participant should be looking at the last three months worth of data. The Fed has done so much already in terms of delivering those hikes. These are not going to be kind of near term policy decisions of what they may do with rates uh, next month. Rate hikes at the September meeting. Maybe the Fed doesn't need to hike. We are not certain that the last hike is behind us. The Fed keeping rates higher for longer. The Fed will have to be more aggressive raising rates higher and keeping rates higher for longer. So as you can see, a varied uh, variety of opinions. He's going to talk about keep raising. He's going to not say anything. We don't know. So you have to, as a trader, be prepared for what Powell's going to do. VIX at 18. Okay. VIX at 18. This is still historically low. When we start getting above 20, look for the volatility to really pick up. Zero day options are driving this down. Lots of different factors. Struggling with the dollar, but still on a strong uptrend. 103 spot 446. 
Lots of people asking me, Brendan, what's your target? Where does this have to get to to cause a collapse? Dot com, it went to 121. However, in this cycle, as you guys know, last year, we already hit wherever that is, 114, almost 115. You see the pressure on the markets just at 103. We flip the 618. The bias will be to continue to the one fib, which is 104 spot 699. You can see the next leg down with the mark with the DXY moving up to 104 and confluence with the yields moving up and confluence with the VIX moving up. And obviously you would see massive pressure on the markets at 107 spot 864. So watch the trend of the dollar. How's this affecting the euro dollar? It's been seesawing this morning. It's back up a little bit. Again, you're just stacking candles, guys. Everything's trying to put in a base. Went over this the last couple of videos. You're holding down here your one fib at one spot zero eight. And again, your immediate resistance above you one spot zero nine two. MFI is below the median line trying to break out. And this would be the move. We're looking for this reflexive move. Okay. I'm looking for a reflexive move this week to the upside prior to Powell, prior to Powell giving his speech. And as you guys know, if you watch that last video, all the price target predictions that we made in that video, that video from the grace of God came out prior to the markets all falling apart. Bitcoin hit our target. S&P hit our target. Dow hit our target. Everything hit its targets of where I told you it would go. So we're going to review that this video. 10-year yield, guys. Four spot three five two percent. You just broke above the one two seven two. Where do I think this is going? This is going to the one six one eight four spot six oh six with confluence of a hawkish pal and continued rate hikes, which I do think we are potentially going to get a hike in September with an overheated GDP prediction by the Fed at five point five spot eight percent. We still have cycle low unemployment that is three spot four percent. The Fed has already said their target is to raise it by at least one percent every time. Twelve times they've raised unemployment by one percent. All twelve times you've had a recession. Just FYI, just yet another, yet another market factoid. That's a fact. I will change my opinion about markets when the facts change. Okay. This is what everybody wants to know, but four spot 606 is where I think you're going, but everybody who pretends to be a bond genius, which I am not, or a yield genius, they all want to tell you that this is the peak and it is the top of the white cough range. It could retrace and then come back up as well. But what do I think is going to happen, guys? We went over this last video. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You're going back to your GFC highs, which is where this would take you if it goes up to four spot six, just like on the five year. You're at your GFC highs right before the parabolic decline in the marketplace. How'd this affect the Dow? Again, Dow, five wave kickout fell out of our channel. Let's go ahead and throw just a simple fib retracement on here. We were at the 618 after last video. We pot, we hit it bounce back up and now we're falling back down towards our base because yields are rising but it looks like this is a daily time frame obviously you're going to try to put in some chop here what i'm looking at guys i'll show you on the s p i'm looking for a kick up and then a move down for a lower high if pal is hawkish okay make it a little run up this week as a lot of these markets are approaching oversold conditions you've lost your 50 on the dow like we said last video you lose your 50 coming down to the 618 if you start losing the 618 you're coming down to the one fib at 30 33,595, breaking this channel. And then ultimately you'd be coming down to the 1618 at 32,3. Okay. But that's, we're not there yet. You still have the potential reflexive move off the 100 coming down to the 100. And that is roughly at 34,045 on the Dow. That would make sense that at some point we pick up a little bit this week. Let's go over that on some other charts. What did Bitcoin do, do guys? Exactly what we said it would do. Bitcoin was trading up here. Bitcoin fell right to where I told you it would fall to the 25k region 24930 why cough top why market symmetry two prior 21% moves down look at the bitcoin move down it was 20% to why 21% to why cough went just below it at 23% okay and now you have the shape that is very bad to have going into a press conference, which may be or not a press conference, but a speech, which may be very hawkish. We do not know, but you have a massive double top. If you start losing 25K, this is the breakdown to sweep your 15.5 low, come down to 12, 13K. Let's look at this on the daily time frame. Daily time frame. I went ahead because so many people keep commenting about the pivots. How come you don't have the pivots on Bitcoin? And it's because I clear off my Bitcoin charts a lot to do TA. I don't really have to do that on equities, but cryptos are a lot more volatile. But the June 14th pivot, what did you get? Bitcoin base, 
rise up, okay? Traded that in the room. We shorted Bitcoin over here. And what do we have now? We had the pivot. Look at the pivot date, August 14th, when everything sold off the day of, day after, Bitcoin fell down. And if you look at this move, guys, again, the pivots, the reason they work is the market has a rhythm that it is moving at. And that's the rhythm that it's moving at is my aligned pivot pattern that I have. And the reason they work is because money flows into all of these assets, basically more or less simultaneously. Again, some markets hold up better than others, but they will follow the overarching markets, especially when the world's largest economy sells off. 20% move down. And that's where we're at with Bitcoin here. Stacking candles right now on the daily time frame, trying to hold this range. And again, what I'm looking for, like we just talked about, let's get rid of some of these lines. What I'm looking for in the equities, and I'll show you here on Bitcoin, is the kickback. Looking for the reflexive move, which, I mean, arguably you had here off the base. But what I'd like to see on a FIB retracement, which is why I would pull multiple FIB retracements from different levels, I would like to see this come up. If you maintain a 382 and then you top out and fall, or a 46 top out and fall, or a 618 top out and fall, this is all strong continuation of trend to the downside. So what do I mean? Let's say we get a market run up prior to Powell on Friday, right? Markets hit oversold, people start buying, MPCs, they get all excited, Kramer's on TV saying buy, buy, buy. People buy the markets, Bitcoin starts drifting up. You come up to the 618, which is the most commonly retraced to FIB in a 30 year market study on the S&P. You come up to the 618, 28,989. If you start topping out there, what's topping out mean? Testing resistance, not breaking it and breaking down, okay? You start topping out there and coming down. This is a strong continuation of trend. I would be looking for the next leg down, and that move is going to be strong if the markets roll over. Now, if we break the 618, my uh, line in the sand for me is always the 786. I love 786 moves because if price comes up to 786, get some candles above, candles below, and start stagnating, this always can turn into a lower risk, especially on equities. Bitcoin can have wider ranges, but a lower risk move for a simple trade setup. If you think the market's rolling over, you can simply put a stop loss, how I would do it, because I can only tell you what I would do. Put a stop loss at the fractal high or a dollar above and let price range up here a little bit. And if you think it's rolling over, it can provide an excellent trade. Gartley actually has this trade set up. This is the original Gartley pattern. Um, in his book. So this is how I would love to trade this, but we'll see what kind of kickback we get here on Bitcoin, if any at all. If the yields keep rising, doesn't really matter between now and then. But when you look at the indicators and a lot of things, Bitcoin's hitting oversold. The main thing I want to drive home with you guys is oversold conditions do not matter if you have a market changing event. Again, if you have a bullish pattern, bearish pattern, doesn't matter. The key event is going to be pal. He's going to move the markets. Unless he just comes out and introduces himself, sips a pina colada and walks off the stage, he's going to say something that will move the markets. Yields will spike. Yields will dump. DXY will spike. DXY will dump. You'll see it reflect it in the marketplace is 2 p.m. I'll throw a link on uh, for our international viewers in our Discord. We always try to do that. Find who's streaming it and get the link in the room. So if you guys want to check out the Discord, do take advantage of that for live streams and education as well. But that's what I'm looking at Bitcoin, guys. It is oversold. Again, I'm looking for that reflexive move to test the FIB. Okay. And if this doesn't want to come up this high, we may have to adjust this to a lower impulse here. Seeing your 3D2 drops down to 26.6, 618 drops down the roughly 28. Got to see what happens here. We can use the higher high or the lower high here for the reflexive move. So let's go ahead and look at Bitcoin on the hour. Not much to talk about. There's the big, but this is a volatility that you see in Bitcoin, right? Right, right through, knife through the white cough base, came down, bounced right back up, and you're just walking this line, walking the line of the 382 at 25,989. Nothing to do here. It's just spooling, okay? It's just accumulation or distribution yet again. Looking at the S&P pivot pattern. What happened again, guys, we went over this two videos ago, last Jackson hole was the propulsion of price down with a hawkish pal leading us into our October low. 
I mean, could literally history repeat the exact same way? Nobody would talk about that on TV, by the way. If Powell comes out hawkish, nobody's going to mention, oh, by the way, the price action is the exact same thing that happened last year. Oh, on a pivot date. It just shot down to the October bottom after Powell propelled it down even further. So we'll see what he does. Does he want to try to save the market or are they willing to let it go to combat inflation? I don't know. I know what Volcker would have done. No Fs given. <laughs> He tanked the market. He put the economy in two recessions. I don't know if Powell has that kind of backbone. If he comes out dovish, you're going to see the markets want to move back up. And it's an easy thing, guys. This is why, you know, there's a difference between forecasting and trading. If Powell's dovish and the markets move back up, how do you know if you're going to defeat? How do you know if you're going to have a double top to trade? You have key levels to look at. If you break your high, you're obviously looking for potentially more upside, right? If you start to fail at a level of retracement, it is a potential trade to go to the downside. So that's why we make videos and talk about these things so people can learn. But looking at our levels here, again, you lost the 618, bias to come to the 1 fib, 43.79. We got below the one fib and tried to bounce back up above it. But as you can see, we're just putting in candles here. Let's look at, do I have this on the other chart? Yeah, I do. Let's go ahead and look at this on this chart. Cause that's the pivot chart. So looking at it, this chart, we're trying to put in a double bottom on the MFI. Momentum is bearish. Want to see this reflexive move back up. As you can see, we fell out of our inner channel, still in the larger channel. Where would this move have us going down to if we do leg up? So what I'm looking at again, guys, to be clear, just like I showed you on Bitcoin, we have our move down. I want to see that reflexive move up, come up to a level, and then this would be your double drive pattern towards your target of 4236. Now, if you look at market geometry and other key concepts here, you're not going to get this on any other channels. If you look at this leg down, five spot, nine, three percent. If you do get our reflexive move, we're going to measure where the 618 is just as a guideline. If we get a reflexive move to the 618 and a leg down, let's go ahead and do that actually. So I can measure this out correctly. 618, we need here on our retracement from that local high, 618 is 4505. So let's just say we get this move back up to 4505, which puts you right back on the outer line of the channel too. So 4505, and let's go down five spot, 93%. Let's see if we get market symmetry in this move, like you just saw in the Bitcoin dump, but five spot, the roller mouse, this is always defeating me especially with caffeine jitters, but uh, five spot, nine, five percent. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it's just a percentage. Where does that line up with Fibonacci knowing that our support levels have been holding up perfectly as predicted? Oh, boom. Look at that. One, six, one, eight, Phi, the golden ratio, 4236 would be market symmetry in these declines. So that move would look like this. First drive down, come up to your 618, second drive down, golden ratio lines you up at the base of your channel. If you fall out of 4236, you're going to 4,000. You fall out of 4,000, you're going to retest your market low. And in my opinion, at that point, you would be sweeping it going to 3,200. Here all week, folks. It's part of the act. So that's the S&P, guys. That's what I think is going to happen. I want to see a reflexive move to come up. If we don't get that reflexive move and we just get continued weakness in the marketplace, then like we talked about last video, look for the continued drift down. And your 100 moving average is roughly at that 4,300 level. Let's double check that. 4,312 is where your 100 is. That could be your next move down here, a little move down to pop back up. Try to get some type of reflexive move. Just measuring from the 618 works out beautifully with market symmetry and geometry. Let's go ahead and look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ was trying to make a move this morning. This is the reflexive move I'm talking about. And as you can see, we sold off yields pushing higher. Dollar still showing strength. Not a lot of reasons to buy an overinflated market. You know where the average market trades in a recession, which is what we are on the cusp of? 12 to 14 on the PE. We are above 20 on the S&P or prior to the sell-off anyways, we were at 20. So you have a nice move down that can occur. You know what the market hit, the S&P and the GFC? It hit a PE of eight, eight, and we're at 20. Just give you an idea of the damage that can be done if the recession starts coming sooner. And remember, the market's not going to wait for a recession. 
We didn't have the recession last year. It didn't wait for it. It's the fear, the biting fear of the recession. When we were rapidly raising rates, the market tries to front run events. So if you get that hawkish pal and he talk, talks about continued rate raising, the economy's too hot, you'll see that front running, possibly that leg up, boom, next leg down to your double drive. And that's what I'm looking to trade. So this is what you have on the S or the NASDAQ. You fell below your one fib. You bounced right off the one, two, seven, two, exactly where I told you you would land. 14,663 fell below, and now you're just dancing on it, right? So that's what the NASDAQ's doing. Do we have anything? Yeah, let's go ahead and just throw this, move this as an SMA, see where your 100 is. These are all fractal trade 15 indicators. You guys can get some of these for free on his page and he custom designs our indicators. Trend gradient moving average. Your 100 is below you. I mean, it's almost down at the 1618. So if this starts failing, that's your next leg down. 1618. Okay. If you get that drift this week with no run up prior to Powell, look for that next leg down. Immediate resistance above you is 14,935. Let's look at our MFI. MFI was trying to come up off the bottom here. Didn't you didn't get to oversold, so this could wave back down. Okay. Just be aware of that. But I am expecting some type of reflexive move. I hope so, anyways. Makes it a lot easier to trade if it does fail on the way down. Let's look at the US 2000, the Russell. Russell fell below the 786, lost the 618, tried to come down and kiss the one fib. Big decline. And now you see the Russell stacking daily candles. Again, reflexive move. You wanna see if this wants to come up back to the upside for a tradable event, okay? So that's the support levels. Let's see where your resistance levels would be on this move up. Much higher up, 1899, 1917, 618 at 1941. I mean, how beautiful would that be? If this thing can manage to come up to a level like that and top out, give you some distribution action like this box over here, and then fail, this is an awesome trade to come down and potentially break your white off. I don't know if we could get that high. I don't think there's enough time without a dovish pal. So if you get a dovish pal, the market could go on a little bit of a run. And that's going to be the fun part is trying to determine which level to trade if we do get a dovish pal. But let's look at this as well. You are oversold on the MFI, bouncing back up. Momentum still very bearish. You got to see if these levels hold, guys. You got to see if these levels hold here. If you can come back up to the upside, these could be great tradable events on a larger time frame. And I personally will be zooming in to a smaller time frame to look at entries. Apple, of course, Big sell-off on Apple, right? It was trading at 30 times. Big sell-off. Fell below the one fib, 176.39. Fell all the way down to where? 171.96. My harmonic wave projection was beautiful here at the one six uh, at the 1618. Golden ratio, 196.47. That was your top. Apple fell. Where will Apple go? People have been asking me, where could it possibly go if we do have a massively, you know, big market sell off with a very hawkish pal and we repeat the cycle of last year between the August high and the October bottom? Well, my immediate target, guys, would be 110 on Apple. Again, sweeping your low, sweeping your low, which was roughly 123, would be 110 on Apple. Doesn't have to get there. Again, these are targets, right? People, people confuse trading and investing. I see some trolls still that post in my comments. Well, dude, I'll, I'll bet you, I'll bet you money. You're not going to hold your trade the whole, the whole year. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably not going to hold my trade the whole year. Uh, the swap fees alone would be astronomical. People use take profit targets, stop loss protection. It's trading. It is not holding. It's the opposite. If you're confusing trading with holding or investing, you're watching the wrong channel. There's channels for that. I trade. I trade levels. I take profits. I tighten my stop loss. I secure my profit. I build my portfolio. I build my bank account. Big difference in trading and uh, holding, guys. Uh, Tesla. Tesla hit our exact target up here at 299. Tesla's about 25% down now. Try to hold the uh, 618 here on the downside at 223.93. Again, if Tesla wants to do a reflexive move, we'll pull out fibs on these guys. We're already 30 minutes in. We'll pull out fibs on these when the time comes. Next video will be Thursday. But if Tesla wants to do a reflexive move, another fantastic opportunity to trade. Because overall, if you look at this direction, I mean, just look at this direction. If you look at this direction, let's just do a parallel channel. Looks something like this. Let me get these tops here. 
just something about like that. I mean, you're basically trading in a channel. You see that? I could lay that out a little bit more perfectly with more time, but you're trading in this channel. You just bounce off the bottom of the channel. Okay, so if you get a reflexive move, again, a lower high that comes in, you can pull a fib from up here, down to here, you get a lower high that comes in and you get a hawkish pal, look for this thing to fall out and break the channel. And wherever your fib is, is where you can find a fantastic trading opportunity. So be aware of that. What is Tesla looking like? I don't have the MFI and stuff on here. Uh, let's throw on our market makers MFI. And we bounced off of, well, we didn't quite get to my 90% oversold. I like to see it really oversold. So you could come back down and retest the bottom of the channel, but you want to see if this does bounce up here from being close to oversold. Looking at the French 40, again, markets move all together, guys. Big money inflows into all these markets. If you look at this, this is where we're at in the French 40. French 40, 7190, but really you're just watching the Wyckoff range of 7,083. You're towards the bottom end of the range here. Look for any parent move up. 7,313 is a strong resistance line, previous support line. And again, the top of that range here for Wyckoff is 74, but you're just chopping around stacking candles. I would track the U.S. markets if I was trading the European indices, because that's going to drive these. The DAX is the same way. You fell out of your channel. However, we went over this last video. You're right down at the base of your Wyckoff. Had a nice move up today and then sold right back off. So if you look at this from that perspective of where you're in danger, if you break this fractal low, 15,465, you start getting momentum below this. I would love to see a retest of that level, of that fractal. Get your Livermore pivot. Boom, trade that candle. This thing will be coming down more with the U.S. markets. How are gold and silver doing? They're moving with the markets like I told you they would. We fell below 1893. And as you can see, gold's at 1889. Just like the markets trying to put in a bottom, gold does not like higher yields, guys. Gold does not like the Fed fighting inflation. Gold will move like the GFC cycle. And that's when you saw gold down 34%. So next level down, 1867, 1618, 1834, key level to watch. Levels above you, 1913, 1929, 1941. Obviously, just these are previous fibs to the downside, but they are now previous support, which is now resistance. So you can flip it around that way as well. Gold just looking identical to the market. Silver tried to put on a little move today, which was nice. Silver tried to bounce up here to 23 spot 11, and it's 23 spot 17 right now. Again, the overall uptrend are still in place in these markets, guys. So I'm not I'm not shitting on the metals. I own <laughs> I own a lot of physical metals. I'm just telling you what I think is going to happen in the cycle. If we do get some type of reflexive move in the equities over the next few days, or a dovish pal that's a continued reflexive move, then I would definitely look to see these metals potentially hit some higher targets with the marketplaces. And with that, guys, we are done. Another long video. Hope you enjoy. I will answer all your comments. Couldn't get to them all last last video. I have a family member in the hospital, so I apologize uh, for not being able to reply to everybody. But we also had like three times more comments than normal. So I will answer all your comments on this video as well. Come check out our room, guys. Have a fantastic Monday. Take care, everybody.